Insight, insightful guidelines from the verse and it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. Allah, the Most High, said. And it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you like a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows but you do not know. A.I. Bakara. Verse 216. Fighting in Allah's path has been chosen for believers even though it is something that is naturally disliked, because it means risking one's life and wealth. However, you may dislike something when, it is good and beneficial. An example of this is striving in Allah's path, which means, in addition to the great reward, the defeat of the enemy and promotion of Allah's word. On the other hand, you may like something whilst it is bad and harmful to you, such as holding back from fighting, this will result in you being defeated and the enemies gaining authority over you. Allah knows full well what is good and what is not, whereas you do not. Therefore, follow his instruction which is better for you. Al-Baqarah 216 Imam ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, said. There is for the servant in his verse a number of insightful guidelines, underlying benefits and welfare. Because indeed if he knows that al-Makru, what is hated, can bring forth al-Mabub, i.e. what is beloved, and vice versa. Then neither would he feel safe from the harm that might occur from something that makes him happy nor would he lose hope whilst expecting a final source of happiness from a situation of harm. That is because he does not have, infinite or perfect, knowledge of the awakib, i.e. the final outcomes, but Allah knows that which he does not know. There is nothing more beneficial for him than fulfilling Allah's commands, even if it is difficult for him in the beginning and his soul dislikes it. Because all its end result will be good a means to happiness, pleasure and joy. Likewise, there is nothing more harmful for him than doing what he has been forbidden, even if his soul desires and inclines towards it, because indeed all its end result will lead to pain, grief, evil and calamities. A distinguishing characteristic of, sound, intellect is that it prefers to bear little pain whose end results will lead to great enjoyment and abundant good. And it avoids that little enjoyment whose end results will lead to great pain and prolonged evil. The observations of an ignorant person does not permit him to, pay attention to the true or real, goals behind events that occur from the very beginning of an affair, but as for the sensible person, he always looks at the, true or real, goals behind those events. He looks at the praiseworthy and unpraiseworthy goals that are not obvious, to the ignorant one. He sees what is forbidden as tasty food that is mixed with deadly poison, therefore, whenever he is urged towards eating that food due to its tastiness, he is turned away due to the poison in it. As for the commandments, he sees them as bitter medication that will lead to physical well-being and cure. Therefore, whenever he is turned away from the medication due to its bitterness, he is then urged towards it due to its benefits. However, this requires the blessing of knowledge by way of which a person can perceive the, praiseworthy and unpraiseworthy goals, behind those events that occur from the very beginning of an affair. As well as firm patience that would enable him to bear the difficulties upon the path towards achieving the expected goals. If he does not have certainty and patience, it would be difficult for him to achieve that. But if he has firm certainty and patience, he would be facilitated with ease whilst bearing every difficulty in his pursuit of everlasting good and enjoyment. An excerpt from Alpha ID pages 203 to 204. Slightly paraphrased. The servant should hand over his affair to the one, Allah, who knows, perfectly without anything hidden from him, the end result of affairs. He should be pleased with what Allah chooses and decrees for him because of the good end result he hopes for. Neither should he make suggestions to his Lord nor put forward his choice over that of his Lord, nor does he ask for something about which he has no knowledge. Because it may be that what will bring about harm and destruction on him is found in what he asks, whilst he does not know. Therefore, he does not choose anything over what his Lord chooses. Rather he asks his Lord to choose the best for him and make him pleased with what has been chosen for him, because there is nothing more beneficial for him than this. When he hands over his affair to his Lord and is pleased with what has been chosen for him, his Lord facilitates him with strength, determination and patience in that which has been chosen for him. Repel the afflictions he would have encountered due to the choice he makes and show him some of the good end results of the choice his Lord made for him, which could not have been attained through the choice he makes for himself. He is relieved of the difficult reasoning about all types of choices and his heart is emptied of projections through which he ascends one obstacle and descends into another. And alongside this, he cannot escape what is decreed for him. If he is pleased with Allah's choice, then what has been decreed will come to him, whilst he is deserving of commendation and graceful in it. Otherwise, what has been decreed will come to him while he is blameworthy and ungraceful, because he is left with the choice he made for himself. Alpha ID. Page 204, slightly paraphrased.
If Allah wants good and guidance for his servant, he makes him witness the fact that the blessing he has is one of his blessings and enables him to be grateful for it. Ah, if his soul whispers to him to move away from it, he seeks guidance from his Lord by way of istikara. B. As one who is ignorant of his welfare and unable to attain it, and then delegates the affair to Allah by asking him to make a good choice for him. Alpha ID 259, slightly paraphrased. Ah, gratefulness, Imam as Sudi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said. In order that you may mount on their backs, and then may remember the favor of your Lord when you mount thereon, and say, Glory to him who has subjected this to us, and we could never have it, by our efforts. And verily, to our Lord we indeed are to return. Surah Az Zukruf. Ayat 13-14. He had created for you all that, in the hope that you settle yourselves on the backs of your mounts during your travels and then remember the blessing of your Lord over you in your hearts, in that He has made them subservient to you when you mount them, saying with your tongues, The being who made these mounts subservient for us is pure and glorified. We control them, whilst we would not have been able to do so if it had not been for His making them subservient to us. And indeed, we are definitely going to return to our Lord alone for accountability and requital. Az Zukruf, 13-14 Mentioned in the verses are the three pillars of gratitude, and they are, acknowledge Allah's blessings, proclaim Allah's blessings, speak about them, praise Allah for it, and c. Submit to Allah and utilize these blessings to carry out acts of worship for the sake of Allah, alone. This is because the intent behind the statement, verily, to our Lord we indeed are to return, is acknowledgement of recompense and to make preparations for it. The objective behind these favors is that they are an aid by way of which the slave seeks to fulfill the commands of Allah. And regarding the statement, and then may remember the favor of your Lord when you mount thereon. This is a specific mention of the favor in that instance, i.e. at the time in which the person enjoys those favors, because blessings intoxicates many amongst the creation, makes them heedless, evil and ungrateful. Therefore, this state in which Allah commanded, a person to remember him for his favors, is a medication for this destructive ailment. When a servant of Allah recalls that he is completely surrounded by the blessings of Allah and that nothing is from him. But rather blessings are, from Allah, its means are facilitated and its obtainment made easy, by Allah, he submits to Allah, humbles him, thanks and praises Allah. And by way of this, he is given continuous blessings. An excerpt from Fatawa Sadaya page, 61. Slightly paraphrased. B. What is Alice Dakara? It is widespread amongst some people that Istikara and seeking the best outcome in an affair is that one goes to the astrologers and soothsayers. This is an opposition to what is found in the Islamic legislation. Rather Istikara and seeking the best outcome in an affair is that one performs two optional rakats and then supplicate with the legislated supplication. Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to teach us the way of doing istikara, i.e. the means to ask Allah to guide one to the right action concerning any job or a deed, in all matters as he taught us the surahs of the Quran. He said, if any one of you wants to do any task, i.e. wants to decide on a matter, he should offer a two rockets other than the compulsory ones and say, after the prayer, O Allah! I seek the counsel through your knowledge, and I seek power from your might, and I ask for your great blessings. You are capable and I am not. You know and I do not and you, alone, know the unseen. O oh Allah! If you know that this task, or affair, is good for my religion and my subsistence and in my hereafter dash, or said, if it is better for my present and later needs, then you ordain it for me and make it easy for me to get, and then bless me in it. And if you know that this task, affair, is harmful to me in my religion and subsistence and in the hereafter dash, or said, if it is worse for my present and later needs, then keep it away from me and let me be away from it. And ordain for me whatever is good for me, and make me satisfied with it. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, added that then the person should mention his, or her, need, i.e. the affair or task. Bukhari, 1162 Al Hiki Kadashariya fi Tafsir al Quraninil Adheen was Sunnatan Nabawiya. Page 95. After Istikara, one also seeks the advice of upright people who are capable of giving advice in the affair. Al Hasan al Basri, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, By Allah. 
never have a people sought advice except that they were guided to the best of what was available to them. Then he recited, the statement of Allah, frowny face and, the believers, who, conduct, their affairs by mutual consultation. Surah Ashura. Verse 38. Those who respond to their Lord, by doing what he instructed and leaving out what he prohibited, and they complete their ritual prayer in the most perfect manner. Those who consult one another in matters of importance to them and who spend from what he have provided for them seeking Allah's pleasure. Ashura, 38. Al-Alama Zayd bin Hadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said. Allah, the mighty and majestic, commanded his messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to consult his companions in some affairs, and consult them in the affairs. Then when you have taken a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surah A. Al Imran. Verse 159. Due to Allah's great mercy, your character, O Prophet, was made to be gentle with your companions. If you were harsh in your words and actions and hard-hearted, they would have left you. So, pardon them their shortcomings with you and ask Allah to forgive them for what is between them and Allah, and ask their opinion in whatever needs to be agreed upon. Then if you decide on something after agreeing together, then go ahead with it, and trust in Allah. Allah loves those who trust in Him, giving them success and support. Ali Imran 159 He, i.e. the Prophet, is the example to be followed by the Ummah, therefore when it is the case that Allah commanded him to consult his companions. Then there is even a greater reason that the Muslims are in need of consultation amongst themselves. When a difficulty that is related to a Muslim's religious and worldly affairs occurs, then indeed it is fitting that he consults someone whom he considers reliable, wise, truthful and sincere. He examines, the advice, given by that person, then he makes a choice either to take that advice or decides not to take it based on what he is satisfied with, in relation to his personal affairs. The Hadith places emphasis on the fact that consultation guides to the best outcomes, and due to this it is said. The one who consults, others, does not regret, thereafter inshallah, and the one who performs istikara will not fail, to achieve what is good for him or her. Both istikara and consultation are legislated and a lot of good is achieved by way of them, as opposed to when affairs are pursued in a rigid and haphazard manner. For indeed this might lead to regret and harm. An excerpt from Anul Ahadis Samad Shar al Adab al Mufrad 1 285. Slightly paraphrased. The one consulted must fear Allah, Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, who said that the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said Frani face the consultee is in a position of trust. Sahih Sunan Abi Dawud. Number 5128. The consultee is in a position of trust. He is the one whose opinion is sought after regarding an affair of maslaha, i.e. an affair that will bring about benefit and repel harm. He is in a position of trust with regards to what he is asked and it is not permissible for him to deceive the one who consults him by concealing the affair that would bring about benefit. Murkat al mafatiya Shar Mishkat al masabiyah Volume 4. Hadith 5062. Page 259. This hadith is an evidence, showing that the consultee has to, advise, with the course of action and opinion in relation to the consultation that which he would do for himself. And it is not permissible that he directs his Muslim brother to something he would not be pleased with for himself. Anul Ahadis Samadhi, Sharu al Adab al Mufrad. Volume 1. Hadith number 256. Page 283.